Okay, so this is a last um, short little video on um, mass spec fragmentation, looking at examples with um, you have something like chlorine in it um, or bromine in it, where you've got those kind of different isotopes um, of it, okay, within your organic molecule. So I've chosen chloroethane as an example. So here's um, my molecule, okay, looks something like that. And we can see from our very simplified, very terribly um, scaled um, spectra, we have two molecular ion peaks here at 64 and 66. And just to note, the real mass spec of it would have extra peaks in it as well, all right? But I just wanted to really simplify it for you. So we've got two molecular ion peaks here, and we've got to think why. We have to remember that chlorine has two isotopes, didn't it? It had one that weighs 35, and it has one that weighs 37, okay? So this um, molecule then, this example might be that the chlorine on it weighs 35. We could then have another one where our chlorine weighs 37, okay? If we add together all the atoms here, it equals 64. If we add together all the atoms here, it equals 66. So our 64 then was caused by a CH3, CH2, Cl35, okay? Remember, we have to say that it's positive for it to be detected by our mass spec. And this one at 66, would be um, CH3, CH2, Cl, which happens to weigh 37, okay? All right. With this then, um, you could then get something like um, with bromoethane, all right? So we'll change um, out our chlorine for, um, for bromine, all right? And you could get asked, okay, what uh, molecular ion peaks would be present in the spectra of um, bromoethane, okay? So all you have to be able to do is think, ah, what is the structure of bromoethane? What, um, what atoms are in it? Okay. And then you're remembering, oh, what are the two isotopes of bromine? And honestly, I do think it's a really good idea to learn the isotopes of chlorine and the isotopes of bromine. Okay. So the two isotopes of bromine, if I just um, make some room down here. Okay. So bromine this time, we have bromine 79 and we have bromine 81. All right. So if we've got bromoethane this time, do, 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 um, the first one could have one that weighs 79, and the second one could, oh, whoop, could have one that weighs um, 81. We're just adding together all the atoms here in this sample, all right, and that comes out at 108. And then we add together all of these ones, and that comes out at 110. So that would be the answer to the question um, on what molecular ion peaks would be seen in this spectra. I'd have one at 108 and I'd have one at 110. The only thing we haven't mentioned then is the peak intensities, okay? We can do that with this, these types of molecules. Going back to our chlorine one, again, this is what we need to be able to remember as well. Our chlorine 35 has an abundance of 75% and our chlorine 37 is 25%, okay? So that is why I've tried to show here that we have this ratio of three to one, all right? It's gonna be highly more likely for um, our chloroethane to weigh, um, sorry, 64, because our um, naturally occurring chlorine, 75% of it weighs 35, and then it's gonna be much less likely, isn't it, to get our um, 37 one, and it's gonna be in a ratio of three to one based on the um, abundances there, okay? With our bromine samples then, they're pretty much 50-50, all right? So you'd find that the relative intensity of these peaks here would be approximately the same. Uh, cases it could extend you kind of by wanting that information too. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's just a little bit clearer that when you're dealing with fragmentation with something with, like with chlorine or bromine in, just remember what we learned back in topic one, okay, about those different isotopes. So again, you're just thinking of the different kind of combinations of atoms um, you can get and just adding them together.